Aren't you glad for the rock tonight? Amen. Something wonderful about that rock. Amen. The Bible teaches us that they that fall upon the rock shall be saved. Amen. But the rock that they that the rock falls upon, they shall be crushed. Amen. Aren't you glad? Amen. That Jesus has become that cornerstone in your life. Amen. Amen. It's given you a solid foundation in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Y'all mighty quiet tonight. Amen. I know it can't be uh, the dreary weather outside. Trying to figure out, did you take NyQuil before you came to church? Amen. Huh? Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just because you love Jesus. Because He's been good to you. Amen. Has He done anything for you today worth praising Him for tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad He woke you up today? Amen. That you got up in reasonable health. Amen. I know everybody, if we had our way, we wouldn't have not one ache, one pain. We wouldn't have no troubles or no trials. But then we wouldn't call on the name of Jesus, would we? Huh? If there was no adversity in our life, we'd never have need. Amen. Of the ever-present help of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm glad today that because of the adversity of sin, amen, Jesus came into my life, amen, and brought me peace. He brought me hope. And He brought me consolation. I'm glad to know that I've got a Savior. I'm glad to know that He's inscribed my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. I believe that's the most important book. Amen. The Lamb's Book of Life. The Bible teaches us there's going to be many books at the judgment day. Amen. But the most important one. Amen. Are we found. Amen. Is our name found written in blood. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them if it's your name is there, tell them my name is there. Amen. Amen. If you don't know, you can know. Amen. You can get it there. Amen. Sister Sandra, I just feel in my heart just to let you testify tonight. Amen. Just say something for the Lord. Yeah. Been bought with a price, praise God. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm
You obey God. Yeah. I truly love it, church. But you know one thing I know without a doubt? It's true. Yeah. I've had doubt about some people that really love me. They said it, but their hearts went away. I got a no doubt in my mind. He loves me. He loves me. If I don't get nothing else in this life, I don't get nothing with Christmas. Just to know that he loves me is enough. Praise Amen. God. He loves us. Praise God. Yes, he does. He loves us. He loves us all. Hallelujah. What a God that would send his only begotten son. What a God that would yeah. love us so much and yeah. he would send his only begotten son that we could have life and have it more abundant. We can't have it. I do love him. I do appreciate him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Debbie, testify. Somebody else? Amen. You just want to brag on Jesus? You know, the apostle wrote in the New Testament, the apostle Paul wrote, amen, that we are to stir up the gift of God. And you know what stirs that up? Prayer is the first thing that stirs it up. Prayer and praise is the first thing that stirs up the gift of God within us. But then we look and we understand that when we begin to testify one to another and we begin to think on the good things that God has done in our life, it's easy, folks. It's easy to fall into that sensation of everything that's gone wrong and everything that's wrong in our life. And it's easy to focus on it. And it's easy to allow it to drag us to the abyss of despair. But I'm telling you, that if we'll stir up the presence of the Lord in our hearts, the Lord will keep us from that dark place. The Lord will keep us from that place of misery, that place of, of subjection, just to all kinds of thoughts. We have fought too hard to get to a place to where the Spirit of the Lord is free and where there's a liberty to worship Him. And we're not going to stand idly by and just allow us to get back to a place where we just endure, where we just go through a service Amen, because it's what we're expected to do. I came here to worship God tonight. I came here to lift up the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm prepared to do it by myself. I'm telling you, I'm prepared to do it by myself. If the Lord hits me just right, I'll shout right by myself and let you watch and won't think a, think a thing about it. But I'd much rather... Amen. Have my brothers and sisters join with me in praise and adoration to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You got plenty of time, amen, to go out and think about anything else you want to think about tonight after service. But just for the for this hour, God bless them little youngins. Amen for that hour. Amen. Can we just focus on the Lord tonight? Your body might be tired, your mind might be full, but I know where there's a resting station. I know where there's a filling station. I know where there's a man, a man with power in his word. 
a man that's able to speak to the hearts and minds of his people. Amen. That if we'll just call upon the name of the Lord, we shall be saved. That is not just for your redemption. That is just not from your deliverance from sin. But that's from every circumstance and subject in your life. Amen. That if we'll just call on Jesus, it'll change the situation. It'll change the direction. It'll give us hope where there is no hope. It'll give us joy where there is no joy. It'll give us peace where there is no peace. Amen. It'll give us deliverance where there is no deliverance. He'll be a door where there is no door. He'll break the shackles where there are no keys. If we'll just call upon the name of Jesus. I think about Paul and Silas and how they were confined to that jail cell. They'd been beaten for merely proclaiming the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for uplifting the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's a whole lot that we could say there and we could look at that. But I just want to think about this, that as they were there and the wounds were open on their back, and they were put in the confines, in the very deepest confines, where the most treacherous prisoners go. They began to sing out of the book of Psalms. And they began to sing praises, the Word of God, back to the living Word. And the Bible says that as they began to lift their voice up to God, somebody paid attention. Somebody from a dungeon cell heard Amen. Praises that were exalting the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And what happened to them is that they forgot all about those stripes on their backs. They forgot all about the brutality that they had just endured. Amen. And the Spirit of God came in and their stocks fell off. A jailer was saved. His house was saved. Their wounds were ministered to. And they were freed from a prison just because... They chose to worship the Lord in spite of their circumstance. What's your circumstance tonight? What's your circumstance tonight? What do you choose to do? I got a message to preach here. I got, I got my notes and everything. Amen. It's dangerous when I have notes. <laughs> but what's your circumstance tonight? Amen. I can tell you mine. You want me to tell you my circumstance? I can tell you right now, y'all are hazy to me. Hey Amen. You got, uh, uh, I look at them lights, there's something wrong with my eyes tonight. I, I, I don't know what it is. But my circumstance is, is that I'm going to go ahead and worship God. And I'm going to do my best to read it. It's not from my sugar. It's not from diabetes. It's something else. But I'm going to do my best to go ahead and worship God. What are y'all going to do? I'm not going to let a little old something stop me, amen, from worshiping God. What about you? What are you going to do? Huh? What's your purpose tonight? Amen. What's your ambition in the house of God tonight? Just to come here, amen, or to come and be fed, amen, from the manna which comes from heaven. I would tonight, if you will, if you'll just lift up your hands to heaven tonight, and thank the Lord that you're able to be in the house of God. Amen. Thank Him tonight that you're able to proclaim Him as your Lord. Amen. That He has done that great work in your life. That He's made the difference for you tonight. That you have a praise for Him. That I can say thank you Lord for your mercy on me. Thank you Lord for your blessings on me. I will cry aloud the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Praise your wonderful name. Amen. I believe you can praise your way to a better place. I believe you can praise your way to victory tonight. I believe you can praise the burdens and the sorrows off of your shoulders and off of your minds. I believe tonight you can praise the infirmities away.
I believe tonight that you can praise the down away. I believe in the divine deliverer tonight who is able to do anything but fail His people. What a mighty God. What an absolute God we serve tonight. Amen. Who is willing to do. Amen. Exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think tonight. If we would. Amen. But acknowledge Him. I bless you, Jesus. <coughs> I bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. He's not a crutch tonight. He's a deliverer. He's a healer. He's an uplifter. He's the lifter up of my head. Up. Hallelujah. Praise God. Daniel fell on his face before him. Amen. When he was allowed to see. Amen. In the spirit. Amen. The wonderful, awesome presence of the Lord God Almighty. John the Revelator on the Isle of Patmos fell as he were dead at the feet of the angel of God. Amen. What would we do if we were able to catch a glimpse of the Almighty tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. How would we respond to Him? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. The Lord said, if I be lifted up, He said, I will draw all men unto me. Amen. How do we lift Him up? It's not physically with our hands, but we lift Him up with our prayers, our praise. Amen. With our hearts, with our voice, we lift up and magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Do you love Him tonight? I want to be guilty. Amen. Of every charge concerning faithfulness to Jesus Christ the Lord. I want to be guilty of praising Him. I want to be guilty of not denying Him the glory that He is due. Amen. If I could ever... Amen. Stand accountable. I want to stand accountable to Him. Amen. For being faithful to acknowledge Him. Amen. Look, the devil's going to fight you. Amen. Whether you praise Him. Let, let me just say this and, I, and I'll get on. Amen. There's two things the devil's going to do. He's going to beat you over the head because you didn't obey. Call you a failure. And he's going to beat you over the head because you did obey Him because it won't God. So the way I figure it, he's going to fight you either way you look at it. Why not give him some ammunition tonight? Amen. I want to give the devil some ammunition to fight against me. Amen. Because I praise the Lord. You said that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. No. No. It's not. I want to be guilty. Amen. I want to be guilty. Amen. Of praise and of being faithful to praise. The Lord Jesus Christ. Take your Bibles tonight and go to the book of Acts in chapter 26. The book of Acts in chapter 26. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The book of Acts in chapter 26. And we'll go to verse 24. The book of Acts chapter 26 and verse 24. The Bible says, And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, 
Thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, I'm not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things before whom I also speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. You may be seated. The Apostle Paul addressed the king. He said, Believest thou the prophets? And he didn't give him a chance to decline. He said, I know you believe. And then Festus, or some sorry Agrippa, he validated Paul's statement when he said, Paul, you have almost convinced me. Just a little bit more persuasion. Just a little more preaching, Paul. And I'd surrender my heart to Jesus. For a few moments tonight, I want to preach to you tonight on that thought I started Wednesday night. I want to preach to you. On the subject of almost. Almost. Bless him, Lord. Show us. That's a word in our vocabulary that we use a lot. Yeah. The word almost. Yeah. We use if a lot too. Come on. You know, you could almost say, and I know that this is a grammatical stretch. But you could almost say that if and almost are kissing cousins. They are so close in their application because they are used in the same way. If this would have been done, then I would have done this. If it would have been this way, then this would have been the result. And it's the same way with almost. I almost... Did it? I almost obeyed. I almost went through it, but I don't know. I just didn't. Can't tell you why, but I just didn't. That word almost means very nearly, but not exactly or entirely. Come on. Close. But not so close. As Paul is preaching, we understand that this is Paul's journey. And so Paul has has been fighting, you might as well say. He's been going against the religious order, the Sanhedrin, if you will. The the, uh, the, uh, Presbytery, if you will. The culture of the day. The culture of the religious society. I want you to understand that culture plays a big role in how that we live for Jesus Christ the Lord. The culture that we've been brought up in, a church culture. I I was appreciative when Sister Sander was talking this morning when she talked about how that she came out of what she would call traditions and religious order. And when she came here, she found just the Word of God. She found truth. And that was a blessing to my heart because I want you to understand that that's what I'm after. I'm after truth. I'm after the revelation of God's Word. I want, as led by the Lord, to create a culture in this church that is a culture that is hungry for the honesty, the integrity of the Spirit of God. I don't want it to be stained or shaped by traditions of the past. I don't want it to be shaped or stained by religious things of the past. I don't want us to be religious in any fashion of the way because I find that religious people have a lot of hypocrisy in their life. And we know that hypocrisy simply means that, amen, people pretend to be one thing when there's something else. And, 
And we can hide a lot of things in a religious order. There's been a lot said, amen, about our church around. There's been a lot of criticisms from the outside of our church that is around. We've been called a cult. We've been called all kinds of different things. We've been called unnecessary. We've been called over the top. Just all grades of things that have been said about our church. But you know, those things don't bother me. They don't make me mad. They don't move me. They don't upset me. Because there's no reason for that to upset me. Because I'll tell you why. Because my drive is pure. Because my quest is pure. Because I'm after. I'm pursuing the Lord Jesus Christ. And our church is pursuing the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not pursuing a name in a, in a, a, a secular circle. We're pursuing a name, amen, that is attached to the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. We're pursuing, amen, an identity, amen, that is of Jesus Christ the Lord. And therefore, as Jesus kicked against the religious order, against their customs uh, that cause people to trust in what they do rather than what Christ does in them. That's the difference now. That's the difference between customs and traditions and serving the Lord Jesus Christ. We become comfortable in our traditions and we trust in our traditions. uh, But our traditions don't redeem us. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that redeems us. And that is what keeps us free. And so, amen, I can get away with a lot of things. I can make myself feel good about who I am in my traditions. But when I pursue Jesus Christ, I don't feel good about my flesh. I don't feel good about, amen, my failures and my faults. The only thing I feel good about, amen, is that He's had, amen, the capacity to come back, come down and touch me with His holiness, to touch me with His purity. With His purity as He's touched you. You understand what I'm saying tonight. I want the true, undefiled Spirit of God living and abiding within this church that we can really know who Jesus is. I want to serve Him in His purity. I want to serve Him in His holiness. I don't have time to worry about hanging out the laundry on the clothesline. I don't have time to worry about skinning people. I don't have time, amen, to go down the list of what you should do and what you shouldn't do. All I need to tell you is that if you'll follow Jesus, if you'll entrust your heart to Jesus, if you'll love Jesus with all of your heart, mind, and body, and soul, He'll sanctify you wholly. He'll make you pure. You won't want to sin. You'll know what sin is. Oh, the blood of Christ. Yes, help him, Lord. Some folks have a lot of problems defining what sin is, and they need people to tell them what sin is. And I can just simplify what sin is for you. It's anything that causes you to transgress against the Lord. It's anything that brings shame and reproach to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you got to do it in a corner, you don't need to do it at all. You see, righteousness calls us into the light that all of our deeds can be seen of men. But darkness calls us, or sin calls us to darkness where we hide stuff from people. And there's no reason for a child of God not to be an open book. And this is Paul's teaching here. This is what he's saying. I'm an open book. I was once like the religious order. I was dispatched of them. I've been taught by the best. I was was chief of the sect of the Pharisees. I went above and beyond. Paul said this. He said, I went above and beyond. Amen. What they sent me to do, I persecuted, I killed, I destroyed. I wreaked havoc to the church of God. Until one day, on the road to Damascus, the church revealed itself to me. Amen. The leader of the true church revealed himself to me. And I 
fell off my beast and on my back. And it was like thunderings going in heaven. And He spoke to me in the Hebrew language. Those that were with me, they heard something, but they don't know what they heard. But I heard it. And I heard Him. He said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It's hard for you to resist me, Paul. Saul. Right. Why are you going to kick against the pricks? And he said, I immediately turned my heart over to the Lord right there. And he led me. And he, he led me to a place and I was blind for three days. I couldn't see. He said, but on the third day, he sent somebody to me and laid the hand on me. And immediately, my sight was restored to me and I was filled with the Holy Ghost. There was a difference Paul was saying. I was dispatched by the so-called holiness folks. Amen. But one day, the Holy Ghost... I'm going to get through it. One day, the Holy Ghost came to me. And He gave me a new mission. I quit being a persecutor, an executor, and I became a distributor. I began to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. He'd done such a work in me. He changed my name from Saul to Paul. He erased everything that I was. It took a while for people to trust what the Lord did in my life. But let me tell you, amen, when I passed from death unto life, I didn't want to live dead no more. Amen, I loved what Jesus did in my life. I'm telling you what Paul was telling Agrippa. He's saying I became alive. And it was so great in me I couldn't shut my mouth about who Jesus is. Well, the church wants to persecute Him. But I want to lift Him up. I want to set people free with the gospel of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. I don't want to split hairs with you. I want to tell you that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And there's no other like Him. Amen. He gave me peace. He gave me hope. And it was so impressive upon Agrippa that he was he was entangled by Paul's presentation of the gospel. We can say that Festus was a representation of the dead church. You crazy, Paul. You've read all these books and you don't even know. You've got a, a just a a consensus of thoughts in your mind and, and you've lost your mind. You really don't know exactly what you believe. You, you're just crazy, Paul. You're just talking out of a whole lot of knowledge in your head. He said, oh, no, Festus. No, no, no. The king knows I'm telling the truth. Oh, yeah. Oh, y'all get that in later. And they'll say, woo! Huh? He said, the king knows I'm telling the truth. Don't you know King Agrippa? I know you know, King Agrippa, that I'm telling you the truth today. Amen. That God did away with that other because it wasn't sufficient. Sufficient. But this Jesus, amen, He came and He bore our sins and He rose again with power and glory on the third day. Amen. And He gave a, came an advocate to the Father for us. I know you know. I know this has been revealed to you. What He was saying is, King Agrippa, you can't deny. Amen. That you know Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords. Conviction gripped the King. Yes, it did, brother. Oh, the power of God. Thank you, Lord. I would to God that conviction would grip us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I believe conviction is a good thing. To a child of God. Conviction will keep us humble. In the presence of the Almighty. And Agrippa responded in these words. Paul. I'm going to take a little creative license here. Paul. If it's just me and you having a one on one conversation. I'd give my heart to Jesus right now. 
But I look around. And I've got to take into account my position. And I've got to take into account all these people watching me. And I've got to take into account what's going to happen. If I surrender my authority, if I surrender who I am to Jesus Christ, what are people going to think of me? What is Caesar going to think of me if I surrender to Jesus? If it wasn't for that, Paul, I'd surrender. Almost. He said, almost, Paul. Your words were so powerful. Your words were so anointed that they pierced my soul. That for a moment it made me willing to surrender everything that I am and give all glory and honor to Jesus Christ the Lord as well as my life. But I can't. I won't. Because my position is more important to me. Almost. How many times has the Spirit of God dwelt with us? Dealt with us? Come on. How many times have we sat there? Amen. And the Lord, this is what I want you to do. I want you to let me in. I want to help you. If you'll call on me, I'll come. If you'll ask me, I'll deliver it. If you seek me, I'll make myself known to you. I will not hide myself from you. How many times, amen, have we heard the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ? But we didn't surrender. Come on. We didn't obey. But we chose to sit there because we didn't physically feel like it. Because we weren't mentally prepared. Because we weren't emotionally able. Because we just weren't invested in Him enough to trust Him. Amen. To help us through our position, our, our, our course in life, or our difficulty in life. But if you had a surrender, what would have the Lord done for you? What would have the Lord changed in your life? How would have the Lord helped you in your circumstance and situation? And you would not have had to endure such hardship as you did. But almost Come on. kept you from deliverance. Our own stubbornness that we're going to do it our way. And if we can't do it our way, we won't do it at all. Hear me tonight. I'm preaching the message tonight that the Lord has laid on my heart. Amen. Because I want you to know that stubbornness has no place in the service of Jesus Christ the Lord. I want you to know that resistance to Him has no place in the service of Jesus Christ the Lord. I want you to know tonight that excuses have no place in the service of Jesus Christ the Lord. We have no right to refuse Him for the great things that He has done in our life. But how many times have we allowed the Spirit to pass us by only to touch our neighbor because we were worried about what somebody was going to say. I don't care. I don't care. You know what? When I get to heaven, amen, I'm not going to be able to stand before the Lord and say, well, Lord, I didn't want to offend somebody because I worshiped you. And the Lord said, you should have gone ahead and you should have went ahead and offended them because that might have been the spark that caught their fire on soul, or soul on fire. I hadn't taken any medicine, I promise. But that would have been what caught their soul on fire. That would have been what made the difference in their life. You could have been that spark in their life that caused them, but they sit there and they said, I almost went, but I just didn't. Come on, Brother David. Oh, I was close, but I just couldn't move that last. Step. I want you to think about the lost opportunities. Yes, sir. A man that almost has caused us in the house of God. Now I know this ain't popular, this ain't shouting stuff tonight, but folks, amen, this will help us. Amen, if we'll allow it to. 
Amen. Because I'm not preaching at you tonight. I'm not preaching to you tonight. This is us tonight. Amen. That if we're going to be an Acts chapter 2 church, amen, almost has to be lost from our vocabulary. If has to be lost from our vocabulary. We've got to, amen, proceed. We've got to elevate to that place. Amen. We're willing to do. We're willing to trust. No matter how crazy it seems. No matter how odd it seems. uh, What the Lord wants us to do. And I'll tell you that God never causes us to do anything that's improper. God never causes us to do anything that's indecent. God never calls us to do anything that would bring shame and reproach upon the Spirit of God. But He calls us to do that. Amen. Which will drive sin out the door. Which will drive fear out the door. And will encourage and bring courage to the children of God. And give us the passion and the fire to stand up and say, I will not be denied. I will stand in the gap. I will be the blessing to my brother. I will be the conveyor. Amen. Of the anointing of the Holy Ghost to my church family. Amen. To them that need Jesus Christ. I will not forbear. I will acknowledge Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for the Word, God. Thank you for the Word, Lord. Yes. When you say, Brother David, every service can't be a shouting service. The Bible don't say that. Men say that. Because church has got to fit what's designed in our minds. Whether or not you agree with me tonight, I'm going to say it anyway. Because when you walk through those doors tonight, you had it purposed in your mind already what kind of service this was going to be for you. Yeah, you did. You sure did. Show us, God. You had it purposed in your mind how you were going to be tonight. Whether you were just going to sit there or whether you were going to come with a mind to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, Brother David. Now, we don't have to run and we don't have to dance every service. But there's got to be worship in every service. And the mindset when we come through the door should have been that I've come to worship. Right. And I've come prepared to take the road to wherever that worship leads me to. But we had a gate on that road. Some of you had a gate on that road before you ever got in this church tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Well, and please don't be offended at what I'm fixing to say. I got a tear to the babies. You ever thought that baby needs to see you shout? That baby needs to hear you worship. That baby needs to know that there's a higher power living in you. Amen. That's worthy of your praise. And I'm a firm believer. Amen. That when we get to worshiping, the Spirit of God will help your baby. I believe it. I believe it tonight that the Spirit of God will help your baby. Amen. That's what's wrong in our churches today. We send them out. We send the babies out. We don't allow them. It might be a good thing in some churches, but we don't allow them to experience the presence of God. We don't allow them to feel the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. We protect them from it. We give them something else to think about. I believe, and that's why I've always said... It doesn't bother me that there's a crying baby in the congregation. And I'm going to tell you, if a crying baby bothers you in the congregation, then you ain't listening to the preaching no way. If that baby gets to crying, I'll preach a little louder. Huh? I ain't going to let no baby outdo me. I can tell you right now. Huh? But that baby's got to know. That child's got to know. We're here for a purpose. We're here for a reason. Right. Because that's how you train that child. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Second Kings, we find in chapter thirteen that Elisha was dying. He was on his deathbed. 
And Joash sent for Elisha. There was troubled times going on. And Joash sent for him and Elisha said, take the arrow and shoot it. And he shot the bow out the window at a distance. Then Elisha looked at him and he said, now take these arrows and smite them on the ground. And Joash smote the arrows on the ground three different times. And Elisha got mad. Yeah, Yeah, he did. Elisha got mad. And he said, why did you stop it three times? He said, you should have smitten it many times. But because you only smote those hours three times, you're only going to have a limited victory over your enemy. But if you'd have done it many times, God would have completely defeated your enemy. I want you to know it's a lost opportunity for victory. And how many times have we let the devil live? Come on. Preach. How many times have we let the problem live? Because we didn't trust God enough, amen, to keep smiting the arrow, to keep smiting the enemy, till he was dead. (laughs) I feel the Holy Ghost and y'all don't, but it's okay. Good preaching, brother. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you what almost does to us. We think about the sinner almost giving in, but what about the Christian who almost gives in? Preach. Well, I, I don't want to embarrass myself. Listen. If the Lord told me to crawl across that floor on my hands and knees, I'll get right down and do it. Yes, sir. Me too. If it was a dirt floor, I'll get right down and do it. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. And there'd be people shaking their head and wondering that he's just showing off. No. If I felt it in my heart to do it, you better believe that I'd get down before God and I'd prove Him. And I'd be obedient to the Spirit of God. Missed opportunities. I want you to understand tonight, missed opportunities are expensive. Well, fine. Amen. In the parable of the talents in Matthew chapter 25. Amen. There were those that were given different levels of talents. And there was the one that he only received one talent. And we're fine. Amen. That he took that one talent and he buried that talent. And when the master got back, he said, I know you were a hard man, so I buried my talent. Amen. And I'm going to give you this talent back. Amen. That you're back. And and the Lord said that he was a wicked and an evil servant because he made no investment in the kingdom of God. The Lord did not invest the Spirit in you. The Lord did not baptize you with the Holy Ghost. The Lord did not... Uh, uh, purge you from sin. Amen. For you to bury what He's done in your life. But He wants you to be profitable. He wants you to invest in the kingdom of God. He wants you to invest in one another. He does not want you to sit there. Amen. And do nothing. Uh, God took that talent away. And He gave it to somebody else. What I'm telling you is, don't let almost cost you your anointing. Don't just sit there. I've said it many times and I don't mean it to be harsh or critical. I don't mean it to be mean or smart. But we all have our different types of how we interact with the Lord. But it doesn't matter to me what your background is. It doesn't matter to God what your background is. What denomination you came out of. It wasn't the denomination that saved you. It wasn't your training that saved you. It was the power of the blood that saved you. And everybody that's been born again ought to have a praise. They ought to have a praise. And if you don't have a praise, then you need to do your first works over again. It's ingratitude when we don't praise God. Our opportunities for service to Him. Jesus spoke again in the book of Matthew in chapter 25. 
In verse 45, he said, Insomuch you did it not to one of these of the least, or did it not to one of these of the least. He said, you did it not unto me. How many times have we picked and chosen Profiled. That's the word. That's the big word now. Profile. People will say that certain people, certain ethnicity, ethnicities are picked on because they're profiled because of where they came from. How many times have we chosen not to do something for the Lord because of the way a person presented themselves? Where they were from. And worse than that. What we've heard. Did you know what we've heard has destroyed more people than anyone, anything else? It has destroyed more hope. It has run more people off from church by us believing what we've heard rather than what we know. Because we didn't take the time to find out the truth. Come on. We didn't take the time to invest in a person to see if it was just somebody's sour grapes or whether that person was really that way. Made an assumption. And how many times has that assumption cost somebody their life? Amen. Almost we did good, but oh, we, did, we didn't want to throw the good word before swine. I dealt with a fella. I used to work with a fella. Said he was an atheist. He blamed God for his sister's death. His sister was brutally murdered. And he blamed God for her death. And he said, there's not a God. If there was a God, He wouldn't have let my sister die. And I'd try to talk to him. I'd just try to, you know, every chance I'd get, I'd just throw a little something in there about the Lord. And one day I was standing there, and I do it. It didn't matter to me. I do it in front of anybody and everybody. I don't care. I ain't got nothing to be ashamed of. No. And I was there in front of my manager in his office, and he walked in, and I made I made a statement about the Lord, and he rebuffed my statement. And the Spirit checked my heart, and he said, "Don't cast me before swine." But I didn't. Stop myself before the Lord talk, told me so. I tried to share. I tried to give hope. I tried to give light before the Spirit of God said He doesn't want it. Don't you trample me under feet. Don't make me common to somebody that doesn't want me. Right. Now when the Lord tells you to stop, that's one thing. But when we listen to the accusations and the stories of people. Yeah. I remember when we used to do CYS at Bethel. And we'd do different things. And sometimes they do this thing how a rumor gets started. And they'd line us up. And they'd whisper one thing in the ear and then they'd pass it on. Well, naturally when it got to me, I changed it. It won't nothing. Like it started out, because I was gonna make sure it was that way. I thought it was funny. I want him trying to. I want him trying to do right. And I'd say something crazy, something stupid, and I'd pass it on. And when it got to the end, it won't even what I said. But that's our opportunities for service, there, friend, because we listen to the winds of the world right. when we should be listening. To the wind of the Spirit. Jesus said. It doesn't matter who they are. What matters is that they need me. I died for them just like I died for you. And if you can't treat somebody. You don't know right. How can you expect me to think you're going to treat me right? It's not a big deal when we do things for people we like. It's when we go the extra mile for those we don't know. That's right. 
It's one of the things I remember. I walked in a customer's place one day in their conference room. He, was, he, he turned out to be a really good friend of mine. And he had had a meeting with his staff that day. And I looked on the board. And there was a saying that stuck with me for the rest of my days. And it stuck with me to this day. And it said, there ain't no traffic on the extra mile. The road's not crowded on the extra mile. Church, if we could ever listen to anything and invest that in our life and invest that in our outreach and invest that in our witness, understand that it's not crowded going the extra mile. There's nobody to get in your way going the extra mile for Jesus. The road of getting away is crowded. But if you'll go the extra mile for Jesus, you'll find little resistance. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I hope y'all hearing me tonight. That's true. This is missed opportunities. We find missed opportunities for worship when Jesus was in the garden in Matthew 26. He goes to pray. He comes back. The disciples are sleepy. And they're, they've fallen asleep. And he looks at him. He says, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. How many times? How many missed opportunities? Yeah. Because when we've allowed our own personal fatigue to cost us to sell Jesus short. Yes, sir. The missed opportunities to see people born again. Jesus said in Luke 19.41, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Thou that killest the prophets. He said, How would I have gathered thee under my wing? Yes, sir. But you would not. How many times? Almost. Almost. Would the Lord have gathered us under his feathers if we'd have just heard and listened and accepted the call of God Amen. in our day of trouble? But he didn't work our way. And so we didn't find safety under his wing. And then finally you think about in John chapter 20. Our acquaintance with the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus had risen from the dead. Jesus had made Himself known to several people. He had been to the house where the disciples were, but Thomas wasn't there. And they began to testify to Thomas. Thomas, we saw Him. He's alive. He's well. I don't believe Him. And He said, the only way I will believe it is if I put my hand in His hand. If I thrust my fist in His side. If I physically touch Him, see Him, and feel Him. He said, then I'll believe. And how many times have we told the Lord, I can't believe what I can't see? Come on. Help us, Holy One. Pray us, Lord. Do you see how powerful almost is? Do you see how almost has robbed, deprived the child of God of the riches of the kingdom of God? Yes, brother. Do you see... How the word almost is so woven into the human psyche that it denies us an experience and a closer acquaintance with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. How can we justify ourselves when we allow almost to be one of the prominent vocabulary words And one of the greatest action words in our Christian life. I promise you tonight that the devil loves almost. And how that we purpose other things more important than Jesus Christ the Lord. When we allow other things to get in the way that we deem them so important that they... Deny us. Keep us away from the presence of God. 
Can I tell you something? Everything for me is going to stop when I take my last breath. It's not going to matter anymore. You know what's going to happen? Somebody else will step in. Somebody else will take up. And it'll go on. It's not going to stop because I stopped. Right. It's not going to stop because the Lord took me on. We make ourselves so important in the secular world that we become of no use in the spiritual world. You hear me? If I ain't said nothing else that should shake us to our core, that statement alone right there should shake us. Amen. That I've put more importance upon me and my desire than I have Jesus and His desire for me. Come on. It's amen or oh me. It doesn't matter if you agree with that or not. It's right. I want you to understand the most important thing to you and to me tonight is Jesus Christ and what I do in His service here. And I want you to understand tonight just because you hadn't been called to preach, just because you hadn't been called to a position in the church, Jesus said your position was a great position because you are the laity of the kingdom of God. You are a representative of the kingdom of God. And therefore, your burden for Jesus Christ is as great because He's called you above all things to be a witness. Amen. Amen. Even though you didn't call you to preach, He calls you to witness. Right. He called you to be faithful. Amen. And how can we expect other people to be faithful? Well, we're not faithful ourselves. I'm not talking about going through the motions. Oh, I had missed church and blah, 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 blah. Well, has it done you any good? There it is. There it is, Lord. Show us. Yes, brother. I reckon my air's bowed up, ain't it, buddy? <laughs> but has church done you any good? Has the power of God resting upon you? Has it influenced you such a way that you know that there are things that have got to be repurposed in your life because the Spirit is more important? Yes, yes, sir. Because the worship of God, the pursuit of God is more important. It is. Nothing else. The Bible tells us and so you can fall out with the Lord if you want to. I'm just repeating what the Lord said. Sure, sure. Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Right? Amen. Even as you see the day of much more, as you see the day approaching. What does it mean? What are you saying, preacher? More. That the Lord said, as you see time coming to an end. You should have more desire to be in the house of God and not less. It should become more important to you and not less. Man, there's plenty of Wednesday nights when I could have sat at the house. Couldn't you? Plenty of Sunday mornings when I could have laid there. Dear God. Plenty of mornings in the wee mornings that I could have laid in bed instead of getting up to pray. Come on. And I'm not bragging on me. Because I promise you, I need to improve. I need to get better. I, I, I don't have any laurels to rest on. I got to get better. Amen. Every day. Yes, sir. We all do. Yes, sir. But it didn't. Because I'd be awake and the Lord would say, you need to go pray. That's right. And you need to pray for such and such. Yeah. And I may never tell you that I prayed for you. But I've called your name. God knows, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the early morning hours. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I've called your name. 
And I've asked the Lord to help you. And I've called your lost loved one's name. Yes, sir. And I've asked the Lord to save them. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I've asked for the Lord to bless you. I've asked for the Lord to help you. And that's not pinning any roses. I'm just doing what the Lord put on me. Yes, I'm just being obedient. I didn't let almost get in my way. That's right. I want you to understand tonight. Agrippa said almost. Man, I know I should. But I'm not. And I'm going to submit to you tonight. And I'm, I found my parking space. What do you know you should do that you're not? How was almost put a roadblock in your progress for Jesus Christ the Lord. Almost. Is detrimental. But I surrender. Is the antidote. Amen. To almost. Amen. I will. I will Lord. Look I have no other agenda tonight. Than just to preach to you the word of God. Sometimes it's like filet. And sometimes it's like medicine. And I feel like the Lord's give us medicine tonight. Because there's ills that need to be cured. There's things that need to be ministered to by the Spirit in our lives. I'm not saying anybody's bad. I don't think anybody's a bad person. I don't think that, that if you're thinking that, then... I failed you. What I want you to know is. Is that the spirit. Has said put their, put your hand in their back. And give them a nudge. Yes, sir. Give them a push. Don't let them be idle. Don't let them get to a place. To where they become complacent. Don't let almost become their banner. But if we'll live a surrendered life, a willing life for Jesus Christ the Lord, you'll find that all of those things that are so important, when you repurpose, they'll still get done because because the Lord will give you the ability to get it done. Amen. When you put Him first. There it is. That's right. I'll prove it to you. You can stand. You know, June's the busiest month of my life. The third week of May to the end of June is the longest six weeks of my life. It's basically sun up to sun down or past, pushing. Because in that time, it's getting the harvest in and then getting another crop in. And doing all of those things. And knowing there's a lot of things. that Revivals and all kinds of things. That are going on in that time. And I don't not schedule revivals. Because of my busy schedule. But I'll pray and I'll ask God. Say Lord. I need you just to work it out for me. Well. The last couple of years. God's worked it out. Where we have got through early. Everything worked so seamlessly that God blessed it, that we finished it early. And you got time on your hands. That's the goodness of God. What I'm saying is, is that when you repurpose Him as your number one, and it's more important to you than anything else, His work, His service, His worship, it's more important to you than anything else. He'll make a way for the other things. I'm speaking to you tonight. I hope you'll hear. And I hope you won't allow almost to keep you from the Spirit of God trying to give you a victory that you've been seeking for. It'll come when you repurpose. When you repurpose, that's it. That's it. 
Just repurpose. And see how great things the Lord can do in your life. The altars are open tonight. Just come. Have a season of prayer.